Fuß. Check that out. There seems to be a common theme though. For you guys that like welding and welding content, it also seems like we also like motorcycles and things that go fast. That seems to be the one common theme amongst welders or aspiring welders. I'm gonna take this out of the box. I wanted to feature this on this channel for a couple different reasons because it's gonna kind of segue into something that I have coming up going on and I wanted to share it with you guys. This thing is light. Holy smokes, for a wheel and tire this big, I can't believe how light this is. If you haven't caught on already, this is called a Wind One K20. And this is kind of like a retro cruiser bike. It's got suspension in the front, no actual shock or suspension in the rear. It uses the seat for that, but this is a fat tire bike and it's uh, pedal assist. I'm curious to see how fast this goes. It's all aluminum. Everything's got a nice aluminum frame. It's got some beautiful welds up on the frame. Check that out. It's got this nice matte powder coat finish. Yeah, welds look really nice. You did a nice job on those. The reason I decided to get an electric bike back in 2012, I tore my ACL and they ended up putting in a cadaver tendon in place of it. I had an operation. A week after that operation, it got infected and it went systemic. It was really bad. I was hospitalized for a while. I had a heart catheter. They fished a tube in my bicep that came out my bicep and it went up and then in to the artery of my heart and every morning I'd have to go to an infusion clinic and get IV antibiotics uh, because again it went systemic, it went through all my organs and uh, I had to do that for 10 weeks and they would pump IV antibiotics into my system every single morning it was a really rough brutal time of my life. Fast forward 12 years here we are today uh, my ACLs come apart and I've torn it again and I also have a torn meniscus this time so I need a surgery. Hopefully this surgery won't be as bad but if you look right here you can see right there there's the screw in my leg that's holding my tendon together and then right at the very top, you, I don't know if you can see it, there's some dark spots. Those are called buttons. That's what holds the top part of the tendon in. Well, what's happened is the attachment point down at this screw, the tendon has come apart. So my leg is super unstable. So the reason I have this bike is part of rehab because I'm like a pro at rehab now because I've had two surgeries on this knee. The first one was the first surgery. They opened me back up a second time for a second surgery to irrigate it all out. That's when they hospitalized me and then this will be the third surgery that they've gone in on that. Well, part of rehab is they have you, you know, bicycle and they do all kinds of stuff, right? Well, this is gonna help me. I'm gonna use this um, for my rehab. Now again, I'm not a doctor, this isn't medical advice and I'm sure that this company wouldn't condone me saying this is for medical use. This is what I'm doing for me. So as soon as I'm to the point where I feel like comfortable and I can walk without my crutches, I'm gonna start using this bicycle so that I can rehab it naturally going on different terrain. And when things get a little bit too difficult, I can kick in the motors so it has power assist because this also has pedals. So this is gonna help with my rehab and it ought to give a nice cushy ride because of the real big fat heavy tires. So I'm really looking forward to this because sitting on a stationary bike just pedaling monotonously in front of a television set really isn't my idea of fun. So 
I'm thinking that the videos are going to probably slow down a little bit on this channel, but I'm going to try to pump them out as quick as I can. I, I've got plenty of work to do them. It's just I don't know how easily I'm going to be able to get along or get up and around. So, so I'm going to get the rest of the padding off this bike, and then I'm going to get the charger out and get this thing charging and then plug it in. This has a display on the handlebars, everything. This is a pretty neat little rig. I'll tell you all about it when we come right back. So far, I'm really impressed. This was packaged up really nice. Even comes with the inflator. I was wondering how is somebody going to... Uh, you know pump up the tires because I have co a compressor, but it even comes with a tire pump So you don't have to worry about that. It's got a tail light that hooks onto the seat stem Got a little Nick right here in Shipping looks like maybe something might have rubbed into it looks like actually one of those cable ties Might have uh, cut into it. So I'll reach out to them for that and uh, front fender pedals manual toolkit a little bell so that you're compliant with road regulations. This is a 48 volt battery. And if you're wondering what the battery looks like and the specs on that, that's the battery and that's the controller. And it also comes with a charger. Kind of like how this is set up. This is nice and easy right here. Just plug it in. It's got an indicator light showing that it's charging. So we'll let that stay plugged in while we're doing the assembly. So by the time we're done, it's hopefully good to go. Charging time to 80% is five hours and it'll take a full charge in seven to eight hours. When this red light turns to green, it means it's fully charged. It also has a headlight too and a color digital display on the handlebars. Here are some of the specifications. So the tire size is 26 inch. It weighs 77 pounds, like I said, it's aluminum frame with 35 kilograms. Maximum weight of 330 pound rider, 150 kilograms. Maximum speed, 28 miles an hour. Pure electric, if you weigh 165 pounds, it's got a range of 34 miles or 55 kilometers. If you do pedal assist, it'll do 60 miles with that same uh, weight rider. Maximum angle of climb, 20%. It's got a seven speed for this right here, seven speeds. Rated for 750 watts at the wheel motor. Maximum power is 1000 watts. So that's kind of the meat and potatoes of this. Let's finish getting it together. These are all the tools that it comes with. So we're gonna need that and that. Now, I know it says put the wheel on next, but I just want to fold this up out of the way just so it's not in my way down here. And here's a little bit of a close-up of the motor in the back and the gears. Now you're going to put one side of your axle through like that with a little spring on it. Oh, it really doesn't get much easier than this, guys. I mean, look, it's even got blue Loctite on the brake hardware. It's all assembled. I love projects like this that are just easy, you know. This has been a pretty smooth, I don't want to jinx myself, but it's been pretty smooth so far. Alright, I'm tired of looking at these flat tires. Let's uh, throw some air in it. Looks like it's saying five to 30 PSI of air, so. Do the same thing to the front tire. Yeah, 26 inch tires, four inches wide. Here we go, 20 PSI. Oh, just about done. Even the, even the pedals are aluminum, which is pretty impressive. I'm going to put the seat post in now and I'm also going to put on the tail light. This is battery operated so you see those little tab on there, little tab there. Just snap it together, that's that and then that just slides onto the stem of the bike. We're just about done. I mean, we got to put the handlebars on and stuff. But it looks like this cable tie right here is just here to hold the steering stem on and then up under here there's a Allen bolt that's right in there that we got to use to tighten this down. What you're going to have to do to get this on, guys, is lift up 
on the forks so that this stem goes up through here so that you can get this bolt started. Once you get it started, then you're all set. You just tighten it down and it pulls everything together the way it should. So then you want to set your tension on your steering. You don't want it so tight that it's hard to steer. So yeah, that feels pretty good there. And we'll tighten up this and it looks like it is missing one of these. I'll have to look in the box. Maybe it fell out. Look at that guys, found it sitting right in the bottom of the box. I'm curious if I can make this thing wheelie. That's kind of what I'm really concerned about. <laughs> As I'm sitting here looking at this, I see that this has mineral oil. This is actually a hydraulic, hydraulic brakes. I mean, that is super awesome. This has a really good feel. So let's get this thing powered up. It looks like we press this. Oh yeah, look at that. Level one, two, three, four, five. Level five, I think that might be the amount of assist. We'll have to find out. So it's got seven gears. Six, five, four. Probably gotta be moving a little bit. All right, so if we put it in what, one? Let's hit the throttle and see what happens. What the heck? 37 miles an hour? That's insane. Seven point six. That's insane. Look at that back tire. <laughs> I'm dying to try this now. I'm just blown away that it has hydraulic brakes on it. That's crazy. Really good brake feel. The front uh, manual just with cable brakes, but that's fine. So let's see how fast this will go. Uh, to give you an idea, I am six foot tall and I weigh just a little over 200 pounds and this bike's tall, it's tall for me. My wife's five foot three and she can't touch on it. So seat's all the way down right now and I'm not quite flat footed. My, my heel is up just a little bit, very ever so slightly. But I will say that this seat and a handlebar is super comfortable. For the cool factor though, at some point I might put a set of straight bars on this because this is adjustable right here. So this part of the stem can go up. It can pivot up and down to wherever you want it. So you could actually bring the straight bars back towards you like right here and I almost have a completely vertical upright stance. Let me uh, get a helmet on and uh, some gloves. We'll go riding. All right, I brought the manual out with me just in case I get stuck and want to figure out how to change some settings. So there's like five different settings on this bike. You got plus and minus, then you got power, headlight, and then select over here. There we go. We can take off the screen protector we can see it's already in miles per hour right now so that's good and if we press the headlight button we got a headlight but we're not going to have that on today because we want to preserve our battery a little bit i've gone over everything on the bike to make sure that everything is tight you can see we got a full battery up here try pedaling this we got to go down oh wow oh wow it just started taking off guys okay so now i'm in like oh it's just, wow, wow. Yeah, it's just taking off, guys. It's just doing its own thing. I'm in uh, seventh gear, and uh, I'm doing 11 miles an hour. Let me hit the throttle. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh yeah, 29, 30. Oh, front fender's flopping around. 32. 33. What if I pedal? Oh, I can't even keep up with it. 33.7. 33.9. 
Front fender's flopping around. All right, let me, uh, wow. This thing is fast. This thing's pretty quick. Let me, uh, so let me go into five, two, three, four, five. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it, the bike just took off just with me pedaling. Now it's coasting. Now it just took off. It's doing it for me. Oh, this is awesome, guys. So I'm just coasting, right? I could do something about that front fender, but... So I'm just coasting along. I can just see me using this rehab in my knee. And then I kind of get a little tired. So, yeah, it just took off. Look at this. Look at the speed. It's going up to 20. Oh, yeah. This thing's fun. But you know what's even more fun, guys? Just do this. Don't even pedal at all. Just pin it. Yeah, that fender. Listen to that thing. How's it going, guys? Good. This is a pretty comfortable bike, guys. I don't ride a bike a lot, so, I mean, a, like a pedal bike. So, anything for a seat is usually, like, hurts my butt. But this one right now is super comfortable. Might not look the coolest, but it's comfortable. Oh man, that's loud, huh? Oh, my handlebars went down when I went off that jump. Well, that went off that curb, I should say. Oh, wow. Whew, yeah, she's heavy. Let's see if I can even lift this front end up. Whoa, no. <clears throat> I can use a wheelie anything, too. Like, even a... Riding lawnmower. <clears throat> no. All right, she's heavy. <clears throat> no, I'm snapping my head back. Maybe this bike just can't wheel it. All right, try it again. Ready? <clears throat> no. I think I'm going to lop that front fender off right there. Yeah. It's got to keep pulling up on that fender. Yeah, it's pretty nice through here. No one would even hear me coming if it wasn't for this front fender. Check this out up here, guys. Let's 
so this, I think, back in the day, used to be an old uh, train bridge. So, well, I think this, because you can see the bridge piers, I think this used to also be maybe like a train bridge back in the day, and that this might have been a trail or a rail bed. I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the fender off, maybe like back here, and then just shorten it and then pop rivet it so it's only, you know, past the headlight a little bit. Just because, look what it does. Like, it gets going. There's just too much vibration there. There's too much stuff hanging out the front. The back doesn't do it because it's secured in a couple places. It's secured here and down here. So, all right. Well, we've already gone nine miles, and I've used one bar of battery. Morning, guys. Thank you. They said nice bike. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so you know what, guys? I'm going to order a set of, uh, like, straight dirt bike bars for this. And uh, I think it'll just be a little... I don't know. I kind of like it like this. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I think it'll be more advantageous to the style of riding I want to do with it, you know, which probably isn't overall what it's intended for because it's considered a cruiser bike, you know what I mean, where I'd be using it more like a BMX bike. But I don't think there's a whole lot different between, you know, I think what makes it a cruiser is, you know, one, the fat, the overly fat tires, because it gives a nice cushy ride, and uh, these bars that are kind of like back like this to give it kind of a retro look, you know. But we'll get this back in the workshop, we'll get it on the charger, and we'll uh, do some fabrication on that front fender. I knew we were going to turn this into a welding type fabrication video one way or another. It won't be any welding but we'll just do some fabricating on it. Where are we at? Alright, we're at 50% battery right now so I'm not sure how long this trail goes down but yeah I think this is an old tr train uh, rail bed. See now like a dirt bike, you couldn't take a dirt bike down here. Uh, they're, I believe they're not allowed but pedal bikes are. And that's what this is, so. What the? Whoa, I just, oh, can't do that on this. Handlebars started to fold down. I think if I, uh, I think if I put a straight bars on it, that'll limit that. My handlebars moved. It's okay though. Let's see if we can go back on that trail. Let's see if I can go up that steep incline. It's pretty steep. <clears throat> Can I do it? <laughs> oh, she's a little greasy here. Whoa. Almost spun out. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Talent ran out right here. All right. And it's got push assist on it, too. It's like if you're going up a hill. I can't remember how to get into that, but basically it's a mode you press. You hold one of these down, and when you're pushing it, 
it actually gives you some motor assist. It senses you walking alongside of it to make the bike weightless, pretty much. All right, let's go. What a comfortable bike. If you guys are looking for a comfortable ride, so we know this isn't a wheelie machine, so if you guys are looking for a comfortable ride though, this is like super comfortable. My butt doesn't even hurt right now. You know, some seats like on a pedal bike, especially like the real thin ones, they like dig into the bones of your butt. Well, this one, this one's got those nice springs in it. It's kind of got a big fat seat on it. So it's pretty comfortable. Morning guys. That right there, guys, is the Kennebec River. I never really said anything to you about it. Let's uh, stop and take a look over here. So that's the Kennebec River. I'm in central Maine right now. People go fishing down here. I don't know about swimming. The Kennebec used to be really filthy years ago. People's sewer used to drain into this, but not so much anymore. Over the years, it's really cleaned up a lot, so... I don't know if I would swim in it, but that's just me. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> All right, let's. All right, here we go. What do we have for battery? So we're still halfway. We're about half down. We'll get this thing in the workshop and we'll get that fender modified. morning I uh, guess he's not having a good morning it only takes a little bit of uh, kindness just to be friendly to someone you know if they don't say it back whatever it's on them if they want to have a terrible day oh yeah <laughs> pop the front end up a little bit afternoon guys <laughs> you like the bike. Woo. Oh yeah, feel it in my quads. Get that workout in. We went 13 Point eight miles. Back in the workshop. Get this front fender off. Chop it down. I'm gonna take some more off it even. There. That'll go on just like that. And then I'll rivet this on there. I'll clean up these edges and stuff. So it was all like this because we cut that piece out. Now we're back like that. That's gonna work good. I've got some 3 16 aluminum pop rivets and I'm just gonna throw a couple rivets in it give it a try and see how it's gonna work. Oh yeah that's gonna work good. See that underneath, all nice and low profile. I'll do a couple more and that's it, and we'll put it back together. If you guys want something that's great for touch up, use, uh, pick up some fingernail polish. It just works really nice. Good for doing stuff like this touching up edges that you don't want to rust. Granted, it's not going to blend perfectly, but it'll be close enough for what we're trying to achieve here. And this stuff holds up pretty well too. And it shouldn't really adversely affect, you know, if you ride through a puddle or something, it shouldn't really affect anything. I think that long fender was more for looks than anything. You can see up in there, there's no, it's not hitting, it's not going to hit those rivets. 
and uh, yeah, it just looks so much better like that. And I'm gonna leave these rivets just like that. Yeah, that's not flappy at all now, so no more vibration there. And that'll still keep, you know, all the water and splash off us. <laughs> okay, check this out. Okay, so... Yo, it's wicked comfortable. So to power it up, you press that. And then five, zero is off. Five is the most pedal assist you can get. I'm in seventh gear. And that's the throttle right here. Oh, well, take off and have fun. Be safe. I love you. you. Okay, let me see. That's safe. I will. Pick it up on the sidewalk. Love you. Oh yeah, way better. Oh yeah, this is it guys, right here, look, no more flapping. I think the little bit of um, rattling that you hear, oh wow, yeah, this thing's ripping. I think the little bit of rattling that you hear is the chain guard. Hey, getting air and everything. Oh, we'll probably definitely get air here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is it right here, guys. Way better. If you check that fender out now, guys, that looks way better. Not flopping around. Still protecting us good. I think I have a uh, little off-road mirror from one of my from one of my bike builds. It'll be nice to put that on it. That way at least you can see if there's traffic behind you because you don't want to hold up traffic, you know. Wow. <laughs> Got some good air on that one. Yeah, that fixed it, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know it's a little bit uh, different content than what I usually post up on this welding channel. I usually do this stuff over on my motorcycle channel, which is Motivated207. If you guys want to check that out, there'll be some links down below. But any more future videos involving this bike or motorcycles or any other thing, I'll have over on that channel. Like I said, the only reason I brought it into this channel uh, was because I wanted to explain uh, what's going to be going on in some upcoming episodes. Just like that, we're back. And look, still got a full battery. And uh, we've gone a total, since I've had this bike, 16.9 miles. After doing some research, it looks like I didn't have to modify this fender. It looks like maybe initially it should have been flipped around, but I was just looking at like this lip here versus this doesn't have the lip, and then comparing it to this one. This lip faces outwards and the straight one goes down. And in my defense, the directions didn't show a difference either way. It wasn't until I went online to their website and I saw a picture of the bike and I saw that it was actually on the other way. So I probably didn't even have to modify this, but where this is a welding and fabrication channel, why not, right? And I think it looks pretty sharp like that too. Thanks guys. Until the next one, like, comment, subscribe. See ya. Come, 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 come.